I have a cold. <coughs> mm. Take a good look, people. This is what happens when you don't get enough sleep. This sad, patched up mess of a human being used to be a happy-go-lucky kiddo. This clammy, barely conscious sack of mucus and crushed dreams was once a bright-eyed, smiling youngster. And now, all is lost. Well, I mean, until I start to feel better, which will hopefully be soon. I mean, I'm too sick to even exercise right now, which is the greatest tragedy of all, because while my running has temporarily ceased, my steadfast commitment to consuming pounds of dessert every night has not. You do the math, not a good combo. And I feel like a lazy, sniffling, coughing, stagnant blob of bacteria. I know you wanted me to describe that in the grossest way possible, so you're welcome. Also, I may be exaggerating my condition ever so slightly, but the point is I have a cold and I'm not feeling too groovy right now. However, there has been one unexpected benefit to my condition. My voice, which I have all but lost at this point, has dropped to a deep gravelly bass, even more bassy than my normal voice. And as you know, I am all about that base. Ha! <laughs> Obligatory modern reference to popular culture in order to connect with the youth of today. Totally nailed it. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, the old getting a cold gives you an incredibly low sexy voice that nobody can resist. There's been a Friends episode about that, a Naked Brothers Band episode about that. Nickelodeon? Anyone? I'm not gonna say I watched that show, but... I'm not gonna say I didn't. So basically, all of history's greatest TV shows have made use of that classic plotline. But personally, I didn't believe it was a real thing until people started noticing it when I got this particular cold. The other day, I had to perform a scene in an acting class I'm in. ACTING! I act. No big deal. I'm not famous or anything. Seriously, I'm not famous. I don't want to mislead people. If I was, I'd be filming this in my private submarine. Jets are too mainstream. And I would be joined by Andrew Garfield, Chris Pratt, and Robert Downey Jr., who would also be my friends and would come to my beach house slash houseboat for dinner. That's pretty much what famous people do, right? Also, all of their wives slash significant others would be invited, because Emma Stone is a gem. No way around it. Anyway, back to the acting class. I performed this scene with a good friend of mine, and when I finished and sat down, another guy in the class told me, you have a very sultry voice. Naturally, in response to this, I said, thanks. And he says, yeah, it's going a little too far. Fair enough. So after this, I start really paying attention to my voice, and I realize that it has become somewhat attractively deep. Except, of course, when I try to sing. Or woo in celebration. Pretty much the definition of lackluster. But as long as I stick to an even tone, I pretty much have the voice of a true temptress. I don't think there is a male version of that word, which is annoying and unfair, so I'm gonna stick with temptress. One person even thought that I was several years older than I actually am. Good or bad, you decide. So I guess, while I'm sick, I'll milk this voice for all it's worth. Like a state fair prize-winning dairy cow. That was a weird analogy. I suppose the lesson here is that when you're sick, make the most of it. Focus on the things you have going for you in life, the good things, and realize that there can be a bright side to a bad case of the sniffles, or whatever may be ailing you. In short, don't let it get you down. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go serenade some people with a Louis Armstrong medley. I see trees green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Nailed it. I'll catch you later.